Hello, bonjour, and welcome to another edition of JSL TV. I'm your host, my name is Joel. In this video, we're going to be discussing the list of players selected by French manager Didier Deschamps as they get set to play some tune-up matches before the World Cup later on this year in Qatar. Here are my takes on how Didier Deschamps selected his squad. Starting with the newcomers, of course, France getting set to play on March the 25th in an exhibition game against the Côte d'Ivoire at the Stade Vélodrome in Marseille. There were two newcomers that have never been selected for the French national team. One of them, I think, is long overdue, in my personal opinion. The other one, well, maybe, maybe not. It's hard to say. He's had a great domestic season. So we'll start with the one that surprised me a little bit, but but has also proven that perhaps he deserves a shot with the French national team. And that's on defense, Jonathan Klaus. Jonathan Klaus, the defender for RC Lens. Of course, Lens has sort of broken out since they've been promoted into uh, Ligue 1 over the last couple of seasons. And a lot of that has to do with the great play of Jonathan Klaus. Of course, his outlet passes coming from the back have been invaluable. He is actually second in Ligue 1, Klaus is at the moment, in terms of assists behind only Kylian Mbappe and Lionel Messi for tops domestically. Not a bad group of people to be in the same category with, to be in the same conversation with. So in that sense, when you look at what he means to RC Lens, what he has done at club level, perhaps Didier Deschamps figured, well, you know, he's worth a look. Maybe he adds a different dimension to the back line. Of course, there are some other players, I think, that could fit in to the same roles who was chosen by Didier Deschamps this time around. Uh, Léo Dubois was not one of those selected. A bit of a surprise there. But some of the other people who were selected have had strong, inspiring performances for Les Bleus on defense. Théo Hernandez was selected. Of course, his brother Luca as well is on that squad. Lucas has had a bit of a struggle, as has his Bayern Munich teammate Benjamin Pavard, who was also selected. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, Didier Deschamps is thinking that somebody like Jonathan Klaus can be a different face to the familiar defense that we've been seeing. And to be perfectly honest with you, the French defense has not added another real dimension, has not really come up from the back, and they haven't really had some effective guys. Hernandez, Teo Hernandez, that is, has probably been the most effective one. We could see him you know, playing up in midfield. That's where he seems to be uh, most effective, playing as maybe a wingback role, playing up in midfield. So I'm not necessarily convinced that uh, Teo Hernandez is going to be a guy there. So uh, is going to be a guy who's going to start on defense. He might move a little bit up the field, possibly play a wing back role. So maybe Jonathan Klaus is a little bit more naturalized as a fullback than somebody like Hernandez. We'll see what he can bring to the table. The other one, the other new selection for Les Bleus and I gotta say, it's about time Didier Deschamps finally looks at this guy because he's been a terrific performer domestically in the Bundesliga. I'm talking about RB Leipzig striker Christopher Nkuku, who has 15 goals in the Bundesliga to lead RB Leipzig. RB Leipzig had a bit of a tough start to the season. They sacked Jesse Marsh. They seem to have gotten their identity back with that press. Um, and Nkuku has proven that he can score in the final third. He's been very precise. He's been by far the best attacking option for RB Leipzig. He, of course, has similar roles to the way Karim Benzema started his career at club level with Real Madrid. Benzema played second fiddle for the longest time to Cristiano Ronaldo becoming the provider. Well, early on in his career, and Cuckoo has become kind of that same sort of guy. He can be a great provider. He was happy being the number two, number three in command for Leipzig and their high press game. He is now the guy. He is making the most of his opportunity, and he has really, like, provided the sparks needed for RB Leipzig. I am very curious to see how Christopher and Cuckoo fits into the side. Hopefully he gets at least to play. And to be fair, he's got a lot of competition. for So for him to even like get considered, which he deserved for a really long time, is saying something. I mean, just take a look at the strikers and the midfielders that France have who were selected for these upcoming friendlies. 
Pogba has been a mainstay in the midfield. Matteo Genduzzi is having a splendid season at Marseille. It will be interesting to see if he gets to play at the Stade Vélodrome coming up. Of course, he has moved on from Arsenal and seems to have found a home at Olympique Marseille. Up front, well, there's a plethora of talent. How do you get noticed when you've got the likes of Kylian Mbappe, Karim Benzema, Antoine Griezmann, those are some fantastic names, some mainstays for the French national team players that Didier Deschamps is comfortable with. So we'll see. Hopefully Deschamps gives Nkuku a strong look because he has definitely proven that he could add another dimension to this French squad. So we will see if he gets a selection either on the 25th when they take on Cote d'Ivoire or a few days later when they face South Africa in France. Other moments of note, other noteworthy things to talk about as France gets set for these tune-up matches. Chasing second place, I mentioned Antoine Griezmann. Of course, he's had a bit of a difficult loan spell at Atletico Madrid in La Liga this season, but he has been a mainstay and among the people that Didier Deschamps has a ton of confidence in. He hasn't contributed as much lately as he did in the early stages of his career, but he's still a valuable asset to Les Bleus. And Antoine Griezmann. Of course, he recently surpassed Michel Platini in the last qualification window to move into third all-time in terms of goals for France with 42. Well, with a couple of strong performances, and you never know in these types of exhibition games when you have nothing to lose, Griezmann is only four goals back of Olivier Giroud for second place all-time in terms of goals for Les Bleus. Will he be able to get it with a couple of strong performances in these friendlies? We will have to wait and see, but that is something noteworthy. Speaking of Olivier Giroud, he was not selected for the French national team. Seems like he has become sort of the new Karim Benzema, who has had strong performances, maybe not as earth-shattering as Benzema when he was sort of exiled from the French national team. But nonetheless, Olivier Giroud has quietly put together some solid performances with AC Milan, who are at the top of the table in, uh, in Serie A. And a lot of that has to do with some of the big goals scored by Olivier Giroud. He was not selected for this team. Some of the other notable exclusions for the French national team, well... I'm not sure in terms of performances if these were like a big, big surprise, but nonetheless, these are guys who have been in the French squad before who were not selected for these upcoming friendlies. Uh, one that perhaps is not a surprise just because of, you know, how he's been making headlines for the wrong reasons lately. That's Kurt Zuma, the West Ham United person. I'm pretty sure that everybody kind of doesn't want anything to do with him, given the scandal with that video with the animal abuse thing. So uh, it, it should not come as no surprise that Kurt Zuma was not selected for this team. Uh, you know, like... Forget about what he brings to the table. You just don't want that in your team. Any kind of unnecessary distractions like that, uh, you know, no matter what the ability is, you need to send a strong message that that kind of behavior is unacceptable. So Didier Deschamps, I pretty much think that he had no option but to drop uh, Kurt Zuma from the starting lineup. Dayat uh, Upamakamo from Bayern Munich was not selected as well. He was one of the players selected who got some playing time during their Nations League triumph back in 2021. He is not on the team. Um, Anthony Martial has been excluded. He seems to have dropped off the radar of Didier Deschamps of late. Of course, he's on loan to Sevilla, had a tough spell with Manchester United with injury problems over the last couple of seasons. He's trying to rejuvenate his career again. He seems to be going on a bit of a downward trajectory, so he was not selected. Uh, Marcus Thuram was also not selected. Of course, he was one of the players chosen for the Euro squad. He's not in the squad. He's had a tough spell at Borussia Mönchengladbach this year in the Bundesliga. He's only had two goals so far. He was not selected for the French national team either, nor was Usman Dembele. As, uh, you know, he is trying to rejuvenate things at Barcelona. Barcelona seems to have had a bit of a resurgence of late under their new manager, Xavi. But Usman Dambele still trying to get in with the French national squad. Uh, Paul Pogba closing in on 100 caps. He's got 89. Of course, he's had a difficult spell at club level. But he has always seemed to fit in with the way Didier Deschamps plays. With the way that the French national team plays. Which you can't always say has been the case 
with Manchester United. Uh, he is in the squad. He won't be able to get to 100 caps just yet. Hugo Loris, of course, the captain. He, no surprise there. He's been selected again for this team. He's not going to be able to quite catch Lilian Thuram, Marcus's father, who has the all-time most caps for the French national team. But a couple more caps and he can inch a little bit closer to that uh, potential all-time record for caps for the French national team. France, first game in their tune-up for the World Cup in Qatar goes on March the 25th. That's next Friday at the Stade Vélodrome. And then a few days later, they will play host to South Africa, who they played twice in World Cup competitions before in the 1998 World Cup and the 2010 World Cup. So what are your thoughts? What do you think about the French national team? Are there some players who should have been uh, dropped for this team? Are there some people who don't deserve to be on the French national team coming up for these upcoming friendlies? Is this an indication of the squad that we might be seeing in Qatar in 2022? Who deserves to start? Will we see Christopher and Cuckoo play? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments and let me so let me know how you see these games going between the Cote d'Ivoire along with South Africa. As always, you can like and subscribe, comment, let me hear your thoughts, and as always, check out more quality French content in the future.